Hell yeah. Hey, good job. Oh, we did it. We did it even do an intro, but there was actually King of Horizon Esports joined by the amazing Alice, the LCK guest. The? Is it a good title? Yeah, that, yeah. that works. The LCK title, as we soon Broadcast look Broadcast a commentator, to... one of those things, yeah. Yeah, one of those things, like <laughs> professional yapper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I'm Susan at London. I actually, so I want to start by saying I feel like this not only followed the script, but also didn't at the same time, yeah. right? Because like, I think a lot of us, me especially, even with how I cast the last game, I was expecting Gen G to have a comeback win. Yeah. Because that's exactly what happened in spring. That's what they've been doing. 2-1 has been a curse for so many teams. And then T1 just Turned automatically win a team fight after momentum had shifted back in favor of Gen G. Hmm. And the game is just over. And that was like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're still so reeling. So we're just like, still like, I don't know how to call it, like dizzy? Like, Dizzy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah flustered, yeah. flustered. I don't know, I agree with you, like Canyon pulled out his dumb one literally, which is like D champion to clutch it out. And mm -hmm. then like in the blue side is winning every single game. And I'm like, okay, it's gonna go to game five. It's game five, it. yeah. And they just did a T1 versus JDG all over again. The crazy thing is, is it's also like Faker's Ari that gets them oh there as God. well. And yeah. so like, I think he moves to four and zero on the pick yeah. uh, in Worlds. Oh. It's something that's so iconic. There was a certain skin that was released, but of course he doesn't play. No, Trovi actually played it. Oh, really? Yeah. I think in Trovi's first Ari game of Worlds, he actually played Faker's skin. Okay, maybe I'll just um, it completely. Yeah, but budget. Faker is just, he's just so, I don't know how he's so good yeah. at Worlds. I don't know, and I imagine he would never tell anyone, but it feels like, in order to preserve his his wrist and make sure that like everything's okay coming into mm. the most important tournament of the year, mm. he lets things lull a little bit in summer to charge up for worlds. Because like this this guy, like that Akali was obscene. Yeah. It's like and the, the last prime, time I saw it's like the prime favorite. Yeah. And that was the last time I saw that was in the grand final last <laughs> year, right? And like he did pretty well there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I don't know, isn't it crazy that like Jinji had like, you know, ten match like yeah. In Street Corp, but she won and it comes to Wells and it's a, they just break it. I don't know, that's like so, so real to me. Like that's you could just like wake part. me up right now and say, oh, she won Gen Z's today. And I'll be like, okay, cool. I had a really interesting <laughs> dream. <laughs> I had a weird dream. Yeah, I had a weird <laughs> it dream. was not right. Yeah. Okay, explain it to me. Like other than the mysterious, magical, supernatural T1's clutch factor, what do you think were some of the other deciding factors that allowed T1 to 3 1 today? Well, I don't want to dive into negatives, but I think Lahens was definitely part of the problem, right? Like he was trying to go for a reverse Gumiyushi in the last couple of games mm -hmm. with not being able to find too much of anything. Uh, he did manage to turn things around. I think the Maokai found some value towards the end, but. I think the early game, he was so much of a non-factor that it really put Genji in a huge deficit. And game number one was another example of him just not being able to find a lot of the places on the map that he's normally very good at. The yeah. failed dive on the bottom side mm -hmm. is something that's very not Genji. Mm -hmm. The amount of control that they had just felt like it wasn't quite there until we got to game number two. And I was thinking like in game two, oh, this is the Genji that we're going to see. And they've been playing really well on red sides as well. So yeah. I wasn't expecting this blue side, blue side, blue side to be a thing. Yeah. But yeah, and then it just kind of was until that, uh, that fourth and final game where things just didn't go their way. Yeah, I remember talking to some of the Genji members right after FlyQuest Genji, which also went to five games, surprisingly. And then it looked like nerves were very impacting the performance yeah. of the Genji players. And I wonder if that did also play an impact on their performance. Like For me, like one of the biggest things was that this is not the Chovy that we've been expecting throughout this whole year, throughout, throughout the last three years, right? This guy, even, even dating back further than that, right? Like on DRX, it didn't really matter, right? He was always winning his lane. On Hanwha, he was still winning his lane. Like he dragged that team to the quarterfinals when they had absolutely no right to be there, as we all know, like that almost miracle run that, you know, DRX actually completed. Yeah. Um, but. In this world, like I think in almost every single game, yeah. it just wasn't the trophy they were expecting. Outside of the one Smolder game against FlyQuest, that's when we saw him truly trophy. Mm. And he almost did it on his Ari, but then wasn't able to actually find anything. Yeah, like, and it then just I think T1 there. instantly noticed it. Just mm. like how everyone was banning Rakan against Weibo Gaming, they're like, okay, Smolder, that's the champion that trophy yep. feels at home with. Ban it on first base. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another thing, I think that. The Genji meta read and the Chovy meta read. I think Chovy has been one of these players that's been very 
stubborn, I guess, with what he plays and what he thinks is good. Mm. And even if he loses on it, he's like, well, I have tape of this being good. I'm going to go back to it anyway. Mm. And I think there's a lot in, especially five game series, mm. like a best of fives, mm. that you really need to pay attention to what's actually happening on the day and mm. not what had happened on, in scrims the day before. Mm. Because if it's not working now, mm. the best thing to do is to just say, well, let's try something else. And he's got such a huge champion pool, he doesn't need to be playing Ari mm. every second game in order to win. Yeah. Now, you can tell I've got some feelings here, you know? Yeah, it's just flashbacks to Genji versus BLG. I don't know, like, you know, it was really, it was actually good for me because I didn't have to support any teams. No, I mean, LCK versus it's LCK, like you just get excited. It's, it's like, oh, but I ended up getting stressed anyway. Yeah. Celebration for T1, but just feeling really bad for like the Genji, but like crazy how T1, remember? Back in summer, they were like, yeah. even like we were actually. You remember worried. last year, <laughs> back in summer, you know, we yeah. had the Poby situation. Yeah. It was a disaster. We're like, will they even make world? Oh, they're not supposed to make it to the quarterfinals. They're supposed to make it to semifinals. They're not supposed to make it to finals. <laughs> but you're also not supposed to reuse a script two years in a row. It's just a bit on the nose. But also, like, there's the other thing yeah. at the same time where it was DRX mm. being the first fourth seed to win worlds. And T1 are like, nah, screw, nah you. screw you. Yeah, we're doing that as well, right? Yeah. That's going to be our fifth, uh -huh. you know? Oh my God, if they do it again. And like, this is the thing that's insane yeah. as well. I want to talk about T1 a little bit yeah. uh, because it feels like we're just eulogizing Gen G. Mm. I think T1 being in the final against BLG mm. is the best thing for the LCK. LCK versus LPO is like the yeah. embodiment of the... But it's also T1 versus BLG. Like, T1 have overcome this demon before. Mm. And I think that it's something that they will be able to r rise to the occasion mm. for in London because this team just gets better over the year. Yeah, and, and over then, every you know, single day at yeah. an international tournament. <laughs> and we don't know like what's going to happen with this particular roster of T1, yeah, yeah, the one yeah, that we've yeah. gotten so incredibly used to yeah. moving into 2025. Uh -huh. And so if they can end with a bang, yeah. For a lot of the fans of T1, that's the best way to possibly get them back together again for another mm -hmm. year. Even if that might just be a pipe dream, we don't necessarily know. But I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> my God. You're feeling so hard, right? I okay? mean, I'm, I'm melting. Sorry, me too. Yeah, it's... sorry for the, all the lies. Oh, okay, no, we'll no, no. slowly close the interview half because you're feeling like red. <laughs> and all red. No, I'm happy to sweat. It's fine. It's what I do. <laughs> oh, like, if you had to pick the MVP of the series. Oh, that's a difficult one. Like, you know, like carry all those hooks flashing by, like, you know, Faker, all the charm landing and... Yeah, it's a hard one. Yeah, like Ono was everywhere. I mean, I think the way that I choose MVPs is based on the performance of the players throughout the year and mm -hmm. how much they step up in certain series compared to what they've done prior. Oh. So I think you're right. I think it's either Carrier or Faker. But for me, Faker really stood out, yeah. especially on that Akali. Because oh. I was thinking like, they were, they just lost a game. And last time that we saw him brought the Akali out, I, I think I said this on cast as yeah. well, it was more like, we're going to use this to snowball, like a mental snowball, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, we're feeling it, we've got this. But this was a, they pull it out in response yeah. to Genji being able to take exactly. a game. And Faker looked immaculate oh my God. on the champion. And we saw Faker, like, missing Azir shuffles in the LCK. We saw Faker looking like he had zero champion pull, not being able to make... Uh, Tristana work, yeah, all these yeah, sorts yeah, of yeah. things, and yet and people he were calling pulls him like Corky one trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like all of these champions that are not necessarily really high skill cap, and then he has that <laughs> on the Akali. Like, uh, I, I don't know. Like the goat just uh, can I just seems do to this? do it. Yeah, this is like a meme now. Absolute cinema. I don't know, but God, it was an amazing series. Even though it was four games. We deserved five. It actually felt like... But they were still real Five games. games. It actually felt like five games. Yeah, it was just, It was just such a T1 versus JDG, like, flashback. <laughs> yeah, oh, my yeah. God. BLG versus T1 prediction. <sighs> Do okay. I go optimistic uh, can I just, like, or realistic? Give, can I just, like, have a tangent here, right here? Yeah, like, yeah. you know how, like, being at the beginning of the tournament was like, hey, like, Faker, I respect him a lot. He's a legend. Like, you know, I hope mm. he plays for many, many more years. But if there is a superstar, like, that has to come after Faker, perhaps, I mm. want it to be me. <laughs> Oh, that's a God, it's so too. good. And there's actually like, there's so many amazing storylines coming into this series as well, mm. because these organizations have had so many bouts where it's been heartbreak on both sides, yeah. mainly on the T1 side when mm. they were going through those years of trying to get this, this roster into mm. a state where they can actually win. Yeah. Last year, of course, overcoming it, but not actually having to cross that particular hurdle, mm. right? Because mm. they didn't get there because Weibo decided for some reason to show up one day. Mm. You keep talking, I'll just do this. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no it's okay. Yeah. Like, 
I think that the fact that they have to take down mm -hmm. uh, the only, well, like, they have, the fact that they have to take down BLG in yeah. this final yeah. is just beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's exactly what you needed. Screw just write themselves. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. How much do you get paid to write them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I feel really Wait, bad. Wait, isn't that... F so it's five. Like, over their last two world championships, mm -hmm. they've had to take down five different LPL teams in best of fives. Five? Yeah. Oh, I guess, like, over the course yeah, of two yeah, years. Yeah, 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 Over the course of two years. So they, they took down Tess, they took down... LNG. Uh, so, yeah, last year it was yeah, LNG, JDG, mm -hmm. Weibo. And then this time they take down Top Esports, mm -hmm. and it'll have to be BLG. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I mean, that's a lot of ears that they're gonna be collecting if they do manage to take it. And my prediction is probably like a 3-2. Yeah, Draco's gonna have another. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a banger. Yeah, it's two on yeah. versus LPL. It is gonna be an absolute banger. I think like London will explode. Oh yeah, it, like Paris kind of exploded today, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, like the thing that I loved about today, just for a little bit of an aside, mm. was when Gen G came out to take a bow, mm. this place erupted and like, I think that the amount of people that came out that just wanted to experience some incredible League of Legends got exactly what they wanted mm -hmm. and then gave the respect that Gen.G deserved and that made me feel good mm -hmm. because I'm uh, a little bit sad that this Gen.G team that was so incredibly domestically powerful is just never able to get it done. It was, it's, it was Trovi's year. Mm. What's going to happen in 2025? It's been Trovi's year for many, many years. Yeah. Maybe next year, maybe the year after. Yeah. Well, that's what I like to say in esports. There's always <laughs> next year. Yeah. Too many players, I have to say that. <laughs> Any final words? I'm sorry that I didn't get to hear your ending call because, like, you know, I was like just staring at the screen as the French mm, cast us. Yeah, yeah. It's it been was hard a... to listen to anything that isn't exactly what you're doing. Uh, yeah, when we... but it was still an amazing experience. But what did I say? I can I can let you know. What was the ending call? It was something like, oh, Genji might be able to do it really well at home, uh, but the world is T1's home ground." That was something like what I said, mm. which I felt was like cheesy, but the right kind of cheesy for the time. Mm. I didn't mean to really break it down or anything like that, but that's what I went for. Mm. Any final words? <sighs> I just feel privileged. I got two back-to-back -back bangers uh, here at Worlds, and I love my job. And so that's all I really got to say. I'm proud of our teams. And I love my job because I get to talk to you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, good job. Oh, we did it. We didn't even do an intro, but there was actually King of Horizon Esports joined by the amazing Alice, the LCK cast. The is it a good title? Yeah, that, yeah. that works. The LCK title, as we soon Broadcaster, to commentator, to... one of those things, yeah. Yeah, one of those things, like <laughs> professional yapper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm see you soon at London. Bye, guys. Bye.